Hello, in today's video I'm going to show you how you can easily lock down database objects to prevent users getting access to the areas that you don't want them to be able to use. There is a related article here, isleydogs.co.uk, lockdown database objects, and all of the code needed to apply the same effects is available in that article and the example app. First thing to say then is it extends the ideas used in a previous article, Protect Data in Tables and Queries, for which I've also done a video. And in that particular case, I made the tables and queries read only, so therefore nobody could change them. But they could still copy them or export those the data to other applications, which partly defeated the object. So today I'm going to take it a stage further. I can prevent them having direct access to the tables, queries and macros. First thing I'm going to do is remove right click context menus which means they can't copy or export data. I'm also going to use the properties of datasheet forms with tables and queries but in this case I'm going to do it so that it closes items immediately after they're open. And furthermore I'm going to prevent users viewing code in the VBE and I can do that even in ACCDB files and even without using a password. Let's have a look at the example app. The startup form then explains the ideas that I'm going to do here and what we're trying to do then is to prevent those users who know enough to be dangerous, know enough to be able to unlock standard security measures like hiding the navigation pane, hiding the ribbon and so on and make it so that they actually can do very little here. They will still be able to open forms. I want them to be able to do that either from a switchboard or from the navigation pane if they've managed to get access to it. What I don't want them to do, unlike the forms and the reports, what I don't want them to do is be able to view any tables. Now as I said, whilst I would normally hide the navigation pane and I could deep hide the tables so that they can't make them visible anyway, I can't do that with the queries. But let's have a look what happens when we open a table. You see it opens but it immediately closes again without ha them having time to do anything with it at all. None of those objects will stay open. When they right click on any object at all, there is no context menu. I've removed that in access options. So the next thing they're going to want to do is to open the Visual Basic Editor. The standard keyboard shortcuts that they would use for that, Alt and F11, or Control and G for the immediate window, they've also been disabled in access options. But for the purpose of this video, I've deliberately added an Open the VBE item in the Quick Access Toolbar. You wouldn't allow that to happen if you could help it, but users can obviously add that themselves. So if we click on this item in the Quick Access Toolbar, let's see what happens. And you saw briefly the Visual Basic Editor also open and immediately shut. Let's try again. Same thing. No matter what they do, they cannot get access to the Visual Basic Editor. So to explain how I'm actually doing this, I need to get rid of that restriction. And I've also got an auto keys macro which allows me to unlock the database by pressing, in this case, Control, Shift and U. You can choose whichever letters you want to for that effect there. And now the Visual Basic Editor will stay open. Now if we go to Form Hide, we use that in the previous case here with an auto exec macro we open this form hide in the background hidden and it stays running when whilst the application remains open when that form is opened a timer event runs with in this case a 500 millisecond interval half a second and it runs three lines of code the first one here block view table query that one there does two things First of all, it will close any VBE windows that have been opened. Secondly, it uses code to distinguish between a table and a form or report of the same name. So we've got a, a form called students, a report called students, I've deliberately used the same name, and also a table called students. Access can distinguish between them because forms and reports cannot have a link child fields item. Even if you're using sub data sheets, which I don't recommend, 
Forms and reports cannot have them, whereas tables and queries can. So therefore the code will error if you've got a form or a report being opened and therefore won't apply the next bit of code here. Assuming it's a table or query, the code continues to here. It then allows you to open the item by double clicking on it. It's almost impossible to prevent that happening and make your database remain usable in any way at all. So what I'm doing is I'm allowing it to open but I'm immediately closing the same item. It's identified the active data sheet, it knows its name, and therefore it closes it if it's a table or a query. Now what I did to get to this code was my shortcut key, Control shift u unlocked the app, it unlocked the navigation pane, it also closed the form FRM hide. And now it means that we can open these tables and queries and they will stay open and they would be usable like any other table or query in a standard app but by applying the shortcut key in this case I'm going to apply it again the other way around I'm going to lock the app using control shift and L I'm going to relock the navigation pane and I'm going to reopen that form hidden and so when I press control shift and L the forms stay open as before but we're back to the situation where items close and we can't open the VBE. Let's reopen this again by unlocking it and going back to here. We have some other code that runs in the AutoExec app which actually modifies the startup properties. The modify startup properties function runs on an AutoExec macro and the first thing it does is it removes any of the code, the existing code that applies to items such as full menu, status bar, shortcut menus and so on. It then, having disabled whatever was there before, it then sets the bypass key to false, which means that you cannot use a shift bypass. It removes the status bar and it prevents use of special keys like Alt F11 and Control G and so on. When it's locked fully, it also prevents the use of full menus, toolbars, shortcut menus and any changes to the toolbars. In order to carry on development work all I need to do is to enable these two lines and when I enable those two lines and save and then close the database and reopen it that will then mean those lines do not apply for an ACCDB file but you need to open it twice in order to make that change actually be implemented. So that will result in the fact that you will then be able to continue your development work. When you're ready to lock it down again, just disable those two lines, which means for ACCDB files you can alter this, but for ACCDE you cannot. So we close and we reopen and that will change the behavior of the app that's all I've got to do for now. The best way to try this is to actually download the app, read the article and apply it to your, in your own particular apps if you like the idea. Thanks for watching, if you found it useful again add a like, leave a comment, suggest topics for future videos and subscribe and then you'll be notified about new videos being released. I'll see you soon.